Hello everyone, welcome to BioScholar. Our today's topic of discussion is the urea cycle. So as a student, the questions that should arise in your mind is why do we need the urea cycle? So as the name suggests, it is used to synthesize urea in our body. It's a compound looks like this. And then, why is there even a need to synthesize urea? So, listen carefully, the answer lies in protein metabolism. You're probably familiar with this term. Yeah, it's breakdown of proteins. And when proteins digest, they release amino groups. Because proteins are made up of amino acids, and when these amino acids break down, they release an amino group. This amino group is released in the form of a compound called ammonia. And now comes the important part. This ammonia needs to be converted into urea, and there are two main reasons for that. First, ammonia is highly toxic to our body, even in small amounts. If it accumulates, it can damage cells, especially in the brain. So, the body must quickly and efficiently get rid of ammonia. But there's a catch. Ammonia is so toxic that it must be neutralized before excretion. Directly excreting ammonia would require a large amount of water, something our bodies can't afford to lose. So to solve both of these problems, our body converts ammonia into a less toxic and more water-soluble compound, and that is urea which can be safely excreted through urine. And this whole process of converting toxic ammonia into safe urea happens through the urea cycle, also known as the ornithine cycle. In this video, we'll explore how ammonia is converted into urea through a series of detailed steps in the liver. We'll cover the key enzymes involved, the regulation of this vital process, and its importance in maintaining our body's nitrogen balance. We'll also discuss how disruptions in this cycle can lead to metabolic disorders and why understanding this process is essential for both health and disease management. But before we dive into the urea cycle itself, it's important to understand where this ammonia comes from. Ammonia is produced primarily during the breakdown of amino acids through processes like transamination and deamination. Additionally, Ammonia can be generated during the breakdown of nucleotides and through the metabolism of certain drugs and toxins. So, as the proteins and other molecules are metabolized, ammonia is released as a waste product. This ammonia then enters our bloodstream and must be converted into urea to be safely eliminated from the body. Now that we understand the origins of ammonia, Let's take a closer look at the urea cycle and explore how our body efficiently handles this potentially harmful compound. The urea cycle primarily takes place in the liver, which is the central hub for detoxification in our body. The liver cells, known as hepatocytes, are specially equipped with the necessary enzymes and organelles to carry out the urea cycle efficiently. While the liver is the main site, it's important to note that the initial step of the urea cycle, the formation of carbamoyl phosphate, occurs in the mitochondria, a subcellular compartment within hepatocytes. The remaining steps take place in the cytoplasm of these cells. This compartmentalization ensures that the highly reactive intermediates of the urea cycle are effectively managed and that ammonia is safely converted to urea before it is released into the bloodstream and eventually excreted by the kidneys. The urea cycle consists of five main steps, each catalyzed by a specific enzyme. These steps occur sequentially to convert toxic ammonia into urea, which can be safely excreted from the body. The cycle begins in the mitochondria with the enzyme carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1. This enzyme catalyzes the reaction between ammonia, bicarbonate, and ATP to form carbamoyl phosphate. This step is energy intensive consuming two molecules of ATP, and is the rate-limiting step of the urea cycle. Next, carbamoyl phosphate combines with ornithine, an amino acid, to form citrulline. This reaction is catalyzed by ornithine transcarbamylase and occurs in the mitochondria. Citrulline is then transported out of the mitochondria into the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, citrulline reacts with aspartate, another amino acid, to form arginino succinate. 
This step is catalyzed by the enzyme arginino-succinate synthetase and requires the input of ATP, which is converted to AMP. Aspartate provides a second nitrogen atom that will eventually become part of the urea model. The next step involves the cleavage of arginino-succinate into arginine and fumarate. This reaction is catalyzed by arginino-succinate lyase. Arginine is the immediate precursor to urea, while fumarate can enter the citric acid cycle to be converted into malate and then oxaloacetate, which can be recycled to aspartate. Finally, arginine is hydrolyzed by the enzyme arginase to produce urea and ornithine. Urea is then released into the bloodstream and transported to the kidneys, where it is excreted in urine. Ornithine is transported back into the mitochondria to continue the cycle. The urea cycle is tightly regulated to ensure that ammonia is efficiently detoxified without unnecessary energy expenditure. This regulation occurs at multiple levels each playing a crucial role in maintaining balance in our body's nitrogen metabolism. At the heart of the urea cycle's regulation is carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1, the key enzyme responsible for initiating the cycle. CPS1 is allosterically activated by N-acetylglutamate, a molecule that ensures the enzyme is only active when necessary. NAG is produced by N-acetylglutamate synthase in response to increased levels of arginine, signaling that the body needs to ramp up the urea cycle to manage a higher load of ammonia. Beyond enzyme activation, the urea cycle is also regulated by the availability of its substrates, ammonia, bicarbonate, and aspartate. When amino acid catabolism increases, such as during a high-protein diet or prolonged fasting, more ammonia is produced, naturally upregulating the urea cycle. This ensures that the cycle can keep pace with the body's metabolic demands. In addition to immediate substrate availability, the body can adjust the activity of the urea cycle over time by regulating the expression of the enzymes involved. During periods of high protein intake or metabolic stress, the genes encoding these enzymes are upregulated, ensuring that the body has the capacity to detoxify the increased ammonia. Conversely, during times of low protein intake or reduced metabolic demand, the expression of these enzymes is down-regulated, conserving energy. The urea cycle is also influenced by hormonal signals, which reflect the body's broader metabolic state. Hormones like glucagon and cortisol come into play during fasting or stress, promoting amino acid catabolism and thereby increasing ammonia production. This, in turn, activates the urea cycle. On the other hand, insulin, which is released after eating, promotes protein synthesis and reduces the need for the urea cycle by lowering amino acid breakdown. The overall nutritional status of the body is another key factor in urea cycle regulation. A high protein diet increases the cycle's activity to handle the excess nitrogen, while a low protein diet reduces the need for urea production. Similarly, during fasting or starvation, the body's reliance on protein breakdown for energy increases, leading to enhanced urea cycle activity to manage the resulting ammonia. Finally, the liver's capacity to detoxify ammonia is a crucial consideration. While the liver is highly efficient, this capacity can be overwhelmed in cases of liver disease or metabolic disorders, leading to dangerous levels of ammonia in the blood, known as hyperammonemia. Therefore, the regulation of the urea cycle is essential to maintaining a delicate balance between ammonia production and detoxification, safeguarding the body from toxicity. The urea cycle is essential for preventing ammonia toxicity by converting toxic ammonia into urea, a safer compound that can be excreted. This cycle helps maintain the body's nitrogen balance, crucial for protein and nucleotide synthesis. Disruptions in the urea cycle can lead to urea cycle disorders, causing dangerous levels of ammonia and severe health issues. The efficiency of the urea cycle is closely tied to liver function, with liver diseases potentially leading to hyperammonemia. Clinically, blood urea and ammonia levels are key markers for diagnosing and managing metabolic and liver disorders, 
and targeted therapies can help mitigate the effects of urea cycle disruptions. In summary, the urea cycle is a vital metabolic pathway that detoxifies ammonia by converting it into urea, which the body can safely excrete. This process is crucial for maintaining nitrogen balance and preventing ammonia toxicity, which can have severe consequences for the brain and overall health. The cycle involves a series of enzyme-driven steps primarily occurring in the liver, with tight regulation to match the body's metabolic needs. Disruptions in the urea cycle, whether due to genetic disorders or liver dysfunction, highlight its importance in both health and disease. Understanding the urea cycle is key to appreciating how our bodies manage nitrogen and detoxify harmful byproducts, making it a cornerstone of metabolic health. That wraps up today's topic on the urea cycle. If you have any questions or thoughts about this video, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And if you want to study other topics related to human anatomy and physiology check out this playlist. And yeah, I see you there.